Uh, Coach, I know we just talked about it, but can you just uh, talk a little bit more about just the quarterback situation as you go into the last week of the season here? Yeah, we uh, uh, Ben sat out the, our game against St. Cloud, hurt his thumb uh, at the end of the Moorhead game, and uh, went with Sean Kunzinger, uh, came in and played for us. Uh, it was definitely uh, had an effect on the team um, in terms of just what we could do. Uh, some of our uh, more dynamic things with Ben as a runner, uh, we weren't really able to get into that. We tried to uh, change some things up, put Levante in at quarterback for a few plays. Um, we didn't really want to overload Sean with the entire playbook in his first collegiate start. So uh, we got another week here. We'll see. We'll see where Ben's at. But um, you know, our plan going forward is Sean is, is our quarterback here for game 11. Uh, try to uh, to open up the development of him and give him that opportunity and. And hopefully we can stay healthy up front. We took some uh, some pretty big injuries on the offensive line, and um, that doesn't help when you're making your first college start under center either. So um, either way, we got dealt a, a pretty bad hand injury-wise. We've been healthy for the, through the first nine weeks, and then uh, going into game 10, we got a little beat up. But we got one left, and, and we got to just put it all on the line for us. Do you feel that injury helped uh, you know, St. Cloud in, in focusing on just trying to stop the run and come up a little bit? Well, they've been good at stopping the run all year. Um, so, so I don't think that necessarily had a change. I don't think they changed their defensive game plan just because uh, Ben wasn't in there. Um, obviously, when, when Ben's in the game, he's, he's one of the more dynamic quarterbacks in the league just with what he can do with his feet. Uh, so it changes a little bit of what we were doing. Uh, they brought a lot of, a lot of pressure at, at Sean, especially on third downs. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's one thing to prepare for a few years in college football. It's another to get under center and, and get the live bullets flying at you. And, um, you know, as I alluded to, we got a little banged up on our offensive line. So you add those two uh, pieces into the puzzle, it's, uh, it doesn't always play out very well offensively. But I thought our kids played really hard. I thought we had great effort all the way across the board. Uh, didn't give up the fight uh, at all. And, and at times, I thought we had them on the, on the ropes. We just, uh, just couldn't get that nice, consistent uh, offensive drive going to be able to counter punch anything that St. Cloud was putting together. How do you think Sean handled his first collegiate start? You know, I think he did some good things. Uh, he was pretty efficient passing, so that was good. Uh, made some made some decisions that we would definitely like to get back. Um, you know, we ended up turning the ball over four times in that game, and that's uh, that's a recipe for success or for disaster. Uh, but we had three takeaways, so um, we were only minus one. But unfortunately, four take or giveaways is is a much bigger problem than three takeaways is is a positive for us. So. I think he did a good job. There's a lot, a lot of area of improvement, uh, definitely, and he's got another six days to continue to get that development and, and uh, prepare for this last game. So for Meiji coming in um, with the banged up line, uh, quarterback come, somewhat banged up, do you feel that this could be a game to see get some younger players in if, if it, uh, towards the end of the game if you need to, that kind of thing? Or? Well, you know, to be honest, Mike, we've been playing younger guys all, all season, so um, uh, we've, we've emptied our bench as much as we can. Uh, we've got some some kids that we've been uh, what we would call running red shirts all season that have been traveling with us uh, in case of dire emergency if we wanted to burn their red shirt. I mean they're pretty good players, but now that we're going into game 11, uh, unfortunately we don't have the Division One rule where a kid can play three games and still maintain his red shirt. Uh, so if we were to play anybody uh, last weekend or this coming weekend, that that would burn their entire season. And so we're being very cautious of that. We don't want to do that at all with only one game left. So. Um, so we're going to have to to get through it. Senior, it's our senior game, so our seniors are going to play quite a bit, obviously, uh, and they've got to be able to, to gut through some of that too, and um, be allow allow us to have our best opportunity for success. The last couple of weeks, you guys have kind of gone back and forth with facing game plans, whether teams want to pass or run. Bemidji's kind of one of those teams that's going to try and be run heavy. How do you prepare for that and Jalen Fry? You know, I think uh, I think we had I think we did a really good job this last Saturday of, of defending the run. I thought uh, we were very physical, uh, really took away any of their true power run game that uh, that they had. The, the success they had was down the field uh, on some explosive plays, and this is two weeks in a row where we've done a really good job just purely on the run game. Um, so we have to increase that, but uh, you know, once you uh, really dedicate more guys into the box to stop the run. Uh, that's when they'll try to hit you over the top and try to loosen you back up. So we just have to be very um, disciplined in what our keys and reads are. It's, it's got to understand it's, uh, it's okay if they get a three or four yard run here or there. It's okay if they catch a five yard pass. None of that's, uh, that's going to hurt you in the long run. It's just a matter of 
limit the explosives. That's probably been our bit our biggest Achilles heel on defense. Um, and then just be very sound on the run, just fit our gaps and, and we don't have to be dominant. We just have to be uh, disciplined. And if we do that, we can have success. Coach, so far this year, you have had a ton of freshmen and even a former baseball player step in and make some big plays for you. What, what can you say to the work ethic of your team so far and how good your staff has done getting those guys prepared to play in games? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, like I told our coaches yesterday, I mean, anytime you can be in the game going into the fourth quarter, uh, that's exactly where you want to be. And again, St. Cloud, it was 17 13. Uh, starting the fourth quarter. So we were right there, especially as banged up as we were, and, and I thought we did a great job just preparing us for that. Um, you know, Jordy McDougal made his first college start, and he's, uh, he's a one-year senior that's played baseball his, his whole life here. And he was our defensive player of the game, made some really big plays, uh, had a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. Um, so I think we've done some good things development-wise. Uh, our young guys that are playing, I think, um, you know, you're not gonna. We're not gonna get Deion Sanders right out of the can. We got to develop them. Um, but as we go, it's they're, they're only gonna get better, and it's just a matter of them continuing to stick to it and really stick to what we're trying to do, uh, so they can develop. And I know there's a lot of excitement from from those young guys because they also see the future of, of what we're trying to get to. And um, so there's uh, there's excitement there, and you got also being senior day. You've also got a little bit of that uh, senior emotion that's kind of creeping in because this is their last go around. So uh, it'll be an emotional week either way, but it'll be it'll be a fun week. Beaver Bash is always a is always an exciting time. We just gotta on our end try to hold up and, and make it a little bit more exciting than we did last year. How about the season freshman Ali Muhammad is having on the bird breaking a couple of D two era records? Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, he's been phenomenal. I mean, it's kind of gone between him, Levante, and and uh, and Ben as far as our offensive MVP every week. Uh, Ollie's very close to. I think he's only eight yards away from breaking our single season record in the D two era for rushing yards, um, and that's him as a freshman. So I mean, he's just going to continue to set the standards going forward. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, things in his future uh, here that uh, that he can continue to break. Um, but Ollie is not only is he a physical runner, he can he can run through arm tackles, which he showed again on Saturday, catch out of the backfield, a big touchdown catch for us. Um, but he's just a very magnetic personality in terms of the the guys love being around him. He motivates them. I mean, he's the he's the loudest cheering guy on the sidelines when Isaiah Hall's in at running back. Uh, so I mean, he's a he's a team first guy. I just love the kid to death and. Um, you know, they, I mean, we knew when we put him in against Duluth a little bit later in that football game just how the, how it inspired all the guys on the sidelines. And that was game one. And so now we're seeing how it all is playing out here as we go into game 11. 